Welcome, welcome, welcome to the SubHub Podcast. I'm Danny Moreno. And I'm MK Sullivan. And as a continuation of our short form episodes with the amazing American women that competed at the Golden Trail World Series final a couple weekends ago, we are talking to Lauren Gregory in this episode. Lauren Gregory is another one of our standout former track stars, actually current still kind of track star that moved to the trails. Um, And we think that, you know, they are the reason that this sport is changing as much as it is. So it's fun to chat with these athletes about their process, their coaching and their transition to trails. Yeah. Lauren has been, I mean, Lauren had an incredible year, uh, finished with a bang to the series with strong finishes at Mammoth Trail Fest and Headlands Trail Race, um, and then ultimately ended up with two second places at the final, both in the prologue short, heavy, steep race, um, and then second in the actual final as well, um, which gave her a seventh place overall finish in the rankings. In this episode, Lauren is totally open to sharing her current experience within the trail space, um, but also what she'd like to see in the future. We also talk a lot with Lauren about coming back from an injury. So if this is something that you've been experiencing and you want some advice, maybe give Lauren's episode a listen. And if you want to get to know Lauren a little bit more, we have done an episode with her in the past when she was on the trail team, which we will include as a link in our bio. Yep. Yep. And uh, don't forget to subscribe to the Subhub Headlines. This is our monthly newsletter. We've been having some great interviews in those each month, as well as kind of our opinion column within it. Uh, And don't forget to subscribe to YouTube, follow us on Spotify, Apple, wherever you listen to your podcast. Um, And if you're having a really good time following these episodes, consider leaving us a rating. Um, But before we get into this with Lauren, here is a message regarding one of our partnerships. Hey guys, MK here. This episode is brought to you by Never Second. As I get ready to run the New York Marathon, fueling for training is looking a little bit different than normal. In the past, I had a hard time eating thick gels while trying to run faster paces on the roads. This would often lead to me not finishing my nutrition plan and having a rough end to my race or workout. Never Second's liquid gels and mild flavors make it easier to get fuel down while also getting enough carbs to get to the finish line. My goal for New York is to get 60 to 70 grams in per hour, which is easy to do with Never Second's modular system of 30 gram increments. I love their products because they help me stay fueled during my sessions day to day, and they're perfect for mixing and matching flavors to keep things fresh. If you want to try Never Second, just head to neversecond.com. That's N E V E R number two.com. And use code SUBHUB25 for a 25% discount on your order. Hey, Lauren, welcome to the pod once again. Um, First and foremost, where are you at? How are you doing? Hi, guys. (laughs) I am currently in Hanover, New Hampshire, where I live. And I'm doing really well. Just got back from Europe like two days ago. So I feel like adjusted. Not sure why, but doing pretty good. (laughs) It's kind of wild. I don't think we've like talked to you on the pod since your trail team interview last like March or April, whenever that was. Feels like forever ago. Definitely. Yeah. Lots happened between then and now. (laughs) Yeah. Well, I get confused too because we also did the live stream together for the USA champs. And in my head, that's just like a podcast. podcast. Yeah. (laughs) Close enough. (laughs) Um, But yeah, we we totally get that you've just gotten back to Europe. That was a big reason why we wanted to chat today. Um, But we also just want to talk about this year in general. This was your second trail year-ish? ish Something like you, that. <laughs> you, you've been teasing us for the last couple of years, a little <laughs> boop in here, boop out. And um, finally, you know, uh, ended up doing a handful of trail races. Um, but first and foremost, you started this year on the track. Uh, it was a big year for just track around the world. There's this little thing called the Olympics um, and yourself and just by happen chance, a couple, couple of other of American women who are in the finals for their races were also at the Golden Trail World Series final. Um, but yeah, you started on the track and it ended up, it looked like you focused on the 5k, but kind of just talk through the decision of why you chose to do that. Yeah. Um, 
I guess when I talked to you guys, whenever that was like that March, it was right before indoor nationals. And I remember like being on your podcast, like rubbing this cream on my foot, thinking that that would heal a stress fracture. And it didn't. (laughs) I ended up being out for like a year from that foot injury. Um, And I didn't really start being able to run, like train consistently until maybe like last end of November, December, probably into November, like around this time last year. And um, I felt like I had some unfinished business because I didn't get to run outdoor season, like my last outdoor season of college. And I like had some track momentum going into that injury. But yeah, so I started training on the track. Also, my foot just like couldn't really run on trail. It just wasn't strong enough and just wouldn't respond to even like hiking or anything. So it just felt like the most natural like progression back into running and racing. Um and I was just like so stoked to be training again and doing anything running again. So it was fun. I had like a little winter camp in Phoenix and then just kicked off the track season. But it kind of just made sense with where my foot was at. And also I just felt excited to maybe try to lower my PR and make the Olympic trials because I'd never done that before. And yeah, so it just seemed like a logical thing to do in the spring. What, um, remind us what your injury was, because I know it was your foot. Did you end up having to get surgery on it? Yeah, I had a stress, like a full stress fracture through my navicular and it did need some surgery after that. And yeah, I, I also did injure some tendons in the process. So I think that was more what took like the full year to regroup like the whole foot just had to fuse back together (laughs) yeah I needed some TLC I needed some TLC for sure (laughs) yeah Yeah. trails and especially um like Vermont New Hampshire trails do not seem like the move coming off of an injury like that (laughs) no it was like so pathetic like everything would roll my freaking ankle and then I'd be like jacked up for a week (laughs) it was just so (laughs) dumb but yeah, yeah I eventually mean, it came around yeah I mean as someone who just came out of a boot that was the biggest highlight for uh the doctor and whatever is that you know the bone will heal but your tendons are gonna that's what you're gonna feel more in trail running is because of that mm-hmm. stabilization but you know there's a lot of folks who get injured it's really common and so just to like uh get a little bit more detail from start to finish how long was that entire journey for you um I think hmm so I got surgery like the first or second week in March and then wasn't I was doing walk jogs maybe in July but they were kind of failing I don't think I would count my training until my training as like running training I was still doing bike stuff but like wasn't consistently doing running workouts until like basically this exact time maybe like a little later in the year November early November or something like that um to when it would like actually recover fast enough to where I could do another workout in the week and like maybe run again another time so yeah I think then not until probably March could I like attempt some trail running and even that I couldn't do it with intense track training because my foot just wasn't doing okay and then it wasn't until probably like sometime this summer and even still it's like a little crankier but um I'm like very pleased with its ability to handle just all around everything I want to do so <laughs> yeah it just took a little while so probably about a year maybe a little more yeah because I mean for folks who may have not gone through this journey is you know if the boat is injured in the foot then you either have surgery cast it maybe you go straight into a boot or on crutches And that kind of allows it to heal like in the most correct way. But then you have to like work through the scar tissue and getting flexibility and just like rebuilding your foot. I mean, it's like stuck in a boot position forever. Um, Mm -hmm. And so when you say like it wasn't recovering, what do you mean by that? Like after the sessions? Yeah, I felt like it would um, like I would get it through the session like with some pain, but not anything crazy. And like I knew it should be healed by that time. Like I'd given it plenty of time, but then tendons, like I especially dealt with like my post tip being upset and, you know, I just like plunge it into ice water to get it to calm down after running and then hope 
that I could come back and run the next day and either have it be like the same amount of pain or maybe less, hopefully. But oftentimes it would just be like more pain the next day and I just wouldn't run. So it'd be like a few more days of not running, maybe cross training instead. But that's not like ideal. You can't train like that forever. So eventually like the gap closed and I felt like the injury comeback was like, eventually I ended up higher than when I started, but it just felt like so many like bumps plateau, bumps plateau. And if you look back long enough, like over six months or so, it's like, oh, I've actually made it a little bit further in the right direction, but it didn't feel like that in the time at all. Yeah. <laughs> well, tell us a little bit because we, again, haven't talked to you since you were still living in Fayetteville last year. Um, finishing up your college season where are you based now and like what is your day-to-day -day looking like <laughs> uh, I live in the northeast now like north of Boston a couple hours in Hanover which is where Dartmouth College is so got a nice track and some good trails around day-to-day um, -day is pretty chill I guess no school compared to when I was in college I uh, just you know, train and run. I like enjoy the trails around here. Like the Appalachian Trail comes like directly through town and you can kind of pick it up like in Vermont or in New Hampshire or anywhere along here. Um, yeah, it's been a good spot to be based. I'm like very new to the Northeast. So I'm still like familiarizing myself and, you know, trying to figure out where I am all the time, <laughs> like not get too lost. But um, yeah, it's been a it's been a good transition. For sure. And it's paid off, thankfully. I feel like when you have a good season, you're like, I did something right. That's excellent. <laughs> <laughs> well, we um, that's really cool. We're curious, like, how you ended up choosing New Hampshire. Uh, I mean, just to guess, you probably had a lot of, op I mean, you did have a lot of options coming out of college. If you all don't know, Lauren is an ex, still is, but mega NCAA star. Um, and I'm sure you're maybe trying to pick a training group or not. Uh, yeah. So just curious how you ended up in, on New Hampshire. Yeah. I mean, my season or like, I guess my college running experience just ended so abruptly at the indoor meet that I was like all of a sudden spat out into the real world, like trying to figure out what was going on. Um so I spent a lot of that time when I was like in the boot or on crutches, like calling and talking to different agents and I don't know, trying to figure out what the heck was going to happen. And my agent luckily connected me with Nike and like that process seemed to be going on like really smoothly right after indoors and I'll sign my contract. And so at least I had like, this is what I'm doing for a little while and can be financially stable and that contract didn't tie me to any group, which is exactly what I wanted. Because I talked to groups the previous year and I would mention, oh, I want to do trail running like seriously. And I feel like to no fault of them, it was just like not really understood what I meant. <laughs> and that's fair. But I just didn't feel like I wanted to keep doing what I was doing in college and just like put off trail to a later date because it didn't need to happen like that. Um and then I feel like finally, maybe when I was talking to brands again, it was like, oh, trail's actually like a discipline that's growing and um, you can do it professionally and like take it seriously. It's not just on your easy days or something. So, yeah, then um, I looked into different groups at different places, talked to different coaches um, and like talked with Ben True, who has lived here for who knows how long, like quite a long time <laughs> and just trained here. Um, and he was kind of phasing out of his uh, professional running career and taking on some athletes. So, yeah, I met with him, really liked him and just started working. And I think it's tough because I wish there was maybe a trail group or something where we could like actually train pretty seriously in that way. But none of the groups seemed like as specifies, specified as maybe I had envisioned it for myself. So, yeah, it's just been kind of me here chilling, plugging along running with Ben. <laughs> I feel like five years from now, we're going to get to the point where there's like a specific group that does track and trails kind of like, you know, you and a handful of other athletes do. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, I feel like the American contingent is so strong. Like we could possibly come together. And I feel like I've talked to like Anna and, and Allie and a few people and they're like, 
yeah, I'm kind of bummed out about training alone. And I'm like, me too. So maybe, maybe even just like a training camp or something where we all get together and like spend six weeks training together. I think, I think it's about time for that for sure. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I I mean, it's so interesting. I just love the like, yeah, me too. And then like, maybe there's like crickets, like waiting for someone to say like, let's do this, you know? <laughs> yeah. Like where and when guys. Yeah. 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 <laughs> You're like, wait, yeah. me too. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's been so interesting because I think I've been in the sport for seven years, taking it seriously for maybe four or five years. Um, but like when I initially came to the trail space, because I did track in college, but skipped over it. I'm trying to bring this back focus to you. But what I'm trying to say is like when I first entered, it was actually the attraction for most people to trail was like that they could train alone. Right. Is that mm, like mm -hmm. kind of that lone wolf mentality and that's not everyone but that was kind of like the general uh energy I was getting as I was entering the space and it's been so interesting to see the evolution in these past years with truly mega stars like yourself Anna Gibson Alio Grayson Murphy a couple years ago because right she's part of NAS Elite and she wanted to do trail and yeah. I think there also was a little bit of that it's like well we're a road group um and so as like more younger athletes. And I think as you, people are starting to be able to make a career, like you said, financially stable doing shorter trail races where historically that wasn't the, uh, the fact, I don't know how to talk today, but um, <laughs> I am curious, like how long it's going to be before we have like superstar trail groups. And obviously Andy is trying to do that. Like he's done a huge yeah. part in that, but like truly where like, you, Anna, maybe Ali are all living and training together, like in the same area too. Like, yeah. Cool. Yeah. Well, and I, I think, um, there you go. I was going to say, I think you're already starting to see a little bit of that, right? Like you see Hayden and Danny Jones, like spending months at a time training together because they yeah. have a similar coach. And those are guys who probably started the sport thinking like, oh, this is something I do alone. And even they're changing their ways a bit. Yeah. Yeah. yeah definitely. I feel like, um, especially with kind of the similarities between like Grayson, and Allie, Anna and I, where we all came from college teams. And it's like, yeah, I really enjoyed working with other people towards the same goal, like workouts and, and I don't know, I can do trail workouts alone, like pretty easily. I feel like the brain just kind of can turn off, you know, but for me, at least being on the road for like long fart licks and tempos and stuff, it's like, I work so much better with other people. <laughs> like, it's just, you bring so much more to the table and like can get so much more out of yourself when, when you're working along other people. And I've been so fortunate at Arkansas to have like nonstop training partners. Um, so I think we are, maybe, maybe that's, that's going to start happening. Cause I think we all kind of relate to understanding that and appreciating that. Yeah. Well, when we talk about too, like world, world championships is coming up next year hopefully that is uh maybe a goal of yours but like Definitely. Um, the European teams they will have team camps together usually on the course and we always just thought I mean obviously it's a lot harder from the U.S. so maybe like a more uh monetary way to do it oh man I really can't talk to <laughs> fiscally it's maybe easier to do say a team camp in Boulder or like choose Colorado, a location yeah. and like from yeah. a media standpoint how cool would that be if like I'm just going to throw a potential dream team out there, but like you, Anna, <laughs> Grayson, Allie, Rachel, you know, are all there. And it's like, Hey, make a workout video about us, you know, and like help boost the the media side. But also, you know, that's one day out of 12 days and you guys are just doing like super course specific. All right. We're going on a way long time. <laughs> like, no, really the cool. ideas have been hatched. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So there's a sponsor yeah. out there uh, who wants to sponsor this camp. Just like Call it's a win, wins across the board, wins across the board. Just throwing it out there. <laughs> but we are crazy. That. As much as we want to help the sport of trail running, this podcast is about Lauren Gregory. And <laughs> we want another to go, one. Another one. Um, coming back to like the track, right? You uh, came off your injury. What was the goal this year for your track season considering it was, or yeah, it was an Olympic year? Yeah, uh, well, I wanted to make the trials. Um, and the standard of track has just gotten so, I mean, just consistently better, which has been really cool. 
to see um does make you feel like whoa I'm intimidated now (laughs) it's like (laughs) the standards crazy fast um I felt like workouts were going better than races would be but I'm not quite sure that was much like physical more of like a mental barrier for me which was interesting to try to work through and I'm glad I didn't hit that same mental barrier and trail um but it was it was really fun just like getting back into workouts and like doing different training than I ever did in college just a lot more strength-based workouts um so I think that kind of played in maybe into my summer as well not quite sure how next year like once it all kind of sinks in but just a lot of change but really enjoyed like kind of just focusing on track for a little while um I guess I didn't as much enjoy the races so (laughs) that's a little different um but did just want to make the trials and and then go from there so did accomplish that yeah and you ended up running like what 15 10 or something this year in the 5k no not quite that was I ran 15 17 9 9, yeah so however you want to round that (laughs) that's that's so fast and um I guess even though like getting the racing to get to the trials probably was not as enjoyable as you wanted it to be, how was the experience of running at the Olympic trials? The trials were really, really cool. Like admittedly, I was getting like a little bit, I don't know, cold feet, whatever the saying is beforehand and was like, oh, I want to be a broken arrow and not freaking the trials. But that was maybe me being a little bit bratty. So (laughs) I'm glad I ended up going. Um, My races were not as like gratifying as I had hoped, but I don't know. I think mentally when you're not 100% there, it's hard to be in the race itself. But like as an experience, it was so freaking cool. Like even just to be in that race and like experience the power of these women at like full force. I'm like, oh my god (laughs) try not to fangirl mid-race but it was really cool it made me then want to be like okay I want to like dive into the type of racing that I enjoy the most and like I felt like I couldn't quite bring it out of myself in that moment but it was cool to see like such strong powerful women like full-fledged on the track it was really cool yeah I mean across all running disciplines just like American women are at a whole entire level right now or different level um so I could only imagine that and I'm sure like you you hit your goal of getting to the trials and the finals um and then that's also I can imagine you probably felt a weight of pressure you're like wait (laughs) broken arrows happening this weekend too so a lot of emotions going on but regardless super badass uh that you did that uh I know you're saying r- round it up, but that's still 15, 17 to us. And that's <laughs> so fast. <Yeah. laughs> that's so fast. Um, Thank you. So huge congrats on that. Um, <laughs> Thank you. Do you plan on doing track going forward? I think probably not. I Well, we'll see maybe on the next Olympic cycle. I'm not really ruling anything out that far down the line because I don't really know what I'm doing like tomorrow so (laughs) I feel like I'm not thinking that far ahead but for next year I have like some big goals on the trail that I would much prefer to like throw all my energy into for the year um and I feel like for something like maybe more two and a half to three hour races or longer like I have to get all around stronger like aerobically and sometimes I feel like for the 1500 or the 5k you end up just doing like a lot of vo2 which is super fun but I don't know I think if I want to optimize maybe I like plan the year around one thing rather than have like a million little micro goals going on (laughs) yeah so probably not next year but maybe in the future yeah I can't rule it out when the next uh, olympic cycle is (laughs) three four years away yeah three I guess if you if you count like qualifying and stuff, but, um, so let's move on to trails. Then you kind of started your trail season a little later compared to everybody else, obviously because of track, but, um, what made you decide to hop into golden trail as late as Poland and not do something like Sears and all? Um, I feel like I wanted to just be fairly realistic this year and like also not race myself into a hole like I feel like I understood that I was coming from a 15 minute race and Sierra's and all was about to be like a three plus hour situation (laughs) so maybe four hour situation so 
I I don't know. That seemed like a big swing I wasn't ready to take, I think, this year. And maybe I would have done okay, but I think it excites me more to, like, show up and be, like, freaking ready to throw down, you know, not just be like, will I survive? But um, Tatra, I think, was still going to be – all of these races seemed like fairly big swings to me just in terms of how long you're, like, at that effort. Um and you didn't, I didn't get too much time to train in between like end of June to when was that like August or something like really just a, a solid month, which I don't know, you can't get, you can't like rewrite your whole training history in a month. But um, yeah, Tatra was starting out. Okay. <laughs> I, I still just was like quite intimidated by that distance and I think that was going to take me about three hours is what I had predicted. So <laughs> even that was going to be a lot like, yeah, but I don't know. I just wanted to be like more conservative and not, not cook myself. And, and in the final this past weekend, I was quite happy with that. So yeah, kind of putting off some races and not putting too much pressure on doing one thing. Also the series does really make you just focus on the series, which I think isn't quite fair if you want to try other things. And honestly, like Rick Floyd, your coach MK had given me advice early on, like, you know, use this first year to like see what you like and try different things. And just doing Golden Trail doesn't let you like as much do VKs or like World Cup races or other random little side quests you want to go on. So I kind of like that advice and, and took it this year. Nice. Yeah, yeah. it's a uh, be it's that was a really good reminder that three hours is still a long time <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> for me <laughs> to me Sears and all I mean to most people in the sport are like oh Sears and all is so short and so fast but there's still shorter races than Sears and all it just is, <laughs> you know it has that reputation but that's still a long time I mean that's longer than it would take you to run a road marathon uh, yeah you add yeah <laughs> trails um yeah. well that's really cool I mean Poland I mean, based on how the rest of your, your year went, it probably was about to be extraordinary. Um, but in a good, good faith, uh, they ended up canceling the race because it was unsafe for athletes, which was 1000% the right call. Um, as much as, as hard as an emotional, it could have been in that moment for a lot of people. Um, it's not worth your guys' potential lives. And so with that, the whole game got changed because you didn't need <laughs> to do four races. Uh, it was now three races. But there were only two races left, which were the American races, um, which for everyone, Lauren absolutely smashed. Her <laughs> first one, she was third at Headlands uh, Trail Race. Uh, is that correct? I thought you were... Yeah, third. Uh, third. Behind Joyce and Madalena uh, Flore, who were the near dominant uh, females of this year's entire series. And then she followed that up with a sixth place at Mammoth Trail Fest. How was that experience? <laughs> <laughs> it was like very eye-opening I feel like uh I was on a bit of a down coming off of Europe and like that race not happening and um then getting sick by the end and like not having as good of a race at uh Trofea Nazgo as like I had maybe hoped for um so I didn't really know if I like just needed to shut it down or what was going on but I didn't shut it down and I'm very glad that, that happened so yeah I think I didn't really know what to expect um, I think that Headlands course like played into my favor quite a lot and I was very happy with that um, and I just really enjoyed that whole experience I think then that gave me like oh man I'm just gonna like shoot for the freaking moon because I also didn't expect to make the final either so I felt like I had just nothing to lose because I thought you still had to make like you still had to race three races to I don't know I don't know how the freaking rules work but in my head I wasn't like the final wasn't really a possibility so I was like, screw it. Let's just like friggin' send with him at Mammoth. And then I like absolutely bought myself. But that was also fun, just like not as exciting or entertaining for me to race like that as it was the weekend before. Um, but yeah, I think that those like two back to back were like, okay, those are like solid results. I'm very pleased with that. Yeah. I was going to ask if you had always planned on going to the final since you really only planned three races into this schedule even before they changed the rules so mm -hmm. then, no <laughs> so then after you finished um you know top 10 at both of those races were you invited just because you were in the top 30 
Yeah, I mean, I messaged them on WhatsApp, like, Greg Valet and stuff, and I was like, am I in to this? And and I had already <laughs> planned to go to the World Cup because um, I had won Loon, which qualified for the uphill there, and then I was always planning on racing, like, the next day, too, because that course looked so freaking fun, and you, like, descended more than you climbed, and I was all about that. So... Yeah, I was like perfectly fine with ending my season at World Cup, like whatever, we'll just go for it. Um, and so I had flights covered, which was nice. And so I was like, yeah, you don't have to, I guess, like really pay for me, but I'd like to come if that's an option. And they're like, you're in. So we, we went for it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we're always kind of uh, cloudy on the rules too, but it seems like if you do compete in, you know, all four or what turned out to be three, then they help get you there but like you can still go if you're, you're in the you top know, 30 yeah it's yeah. so it seems kind like of it's just but... if they want you they bring you and yeah I mean I'm glad I was in that boat but it's definitely like not fair and not on the website like that yeah. <laughs> I ended up 32nd I think after the two American races and I was like mm -hmm. maybe I should just ask if I can go because I mean obviously I, I had never even planned to run the races to begin with but I was like maybe I should just ask to go and Danny was like do it and then I was like <laughs> ah I got Nana's do birthday it. party. <laughs> do it. Uh, I'm glad. I'm glad you went though, because obviously it, it like it worked yeah. out for you. Yeah, you did okay. You, you did. did okay. <laughs> I don't really know. Yeah, I feel like coming in. Also, I was like showing up, realizing that the game really favors you having more points. So I was like, what am I even actually racing for if I'm like not even in prize money contention? So <laughs> beforehand, I was like kind of confused as to what my overall goal was but racing like that with like no pressure at all is like not something I'll ever take for granted because I feel like by the end of NCA like every time you tow the line it's like we're you know top dog There's like a goal. trying to win these things yeah. yeah like you have to maintain your place and stuff but yeah so I really really enjoyed racing with like very little expectation and pressure well it ended up working I mean even though the rules are a little convoluted at time, you actually did uh, incredible all considering. Uh, Lauren got second in both of the races. And at the final, your points are doubled. Um, so <laughs> that is like a huge boost. And she ended up seventh overall, which this is very reminiscent for me of Ali Osh, not Ali Osher, uh, Ali McLaughlin two years ago. Like she did the two American races obliterated Madeira the races that she jumped in and like ended up top 10 overall in the ranking um so it's a weird loophole that I think is actually super advantageous because you're yeah. not as tired uh <laughs> you don't have as much stress and you just like send it I mean you have nothing to lose yeah. otherwise um yeah and so yeah I mean seriously best case scenario uh we did want to ask you specifically I mean both of the races from the outsider, first off, MK and I were texting back and forth. We we're like, Lauren Gregory, dude, what the? <laughs> like, just absolutely stoked and like frothing over here in America. Thank and you. then, um, from an outsider's perspective, and it seemed to be reality, those races were so fast. And like, you are incredibly smooth on technical terrain, but also everyone else was really good. So, like, how was it like being within that battle uh, the two days? I mean, thank you so much. It's like really boosting my my freaking ego over here. But <laughs> um, I think, yeah, I don't know. I think it was just like such, especially on Saturday, like Saturday, just like such a stars aligning moment where you like actually feel so good and you don't even really know why because <laughs> I, I never race like a freaking I think a prologue is like a cycling thing like we don't do that in running and probably for good reason <laughs> and so I like didn't know how that was going to translate into like a Thursday Saturday situation um but I went for a run like I do like two 20 minute runs the day before and I my second 20 minute run on Friday was like maybe one of my better runs of the whole year. Like I felt so good. Maybe because the sun had like come out, the clouds had lifted and I was like, it's going to be great. And so I don't know. I felt like just a lot of things kind of came together and I usually have some stomach issues and didn't have any stomach issues. And it felt like really good climbing and just the course itself, I think played into my hand like really well with it being so technical. And 
like honestly the east coast is like stupid technical and so that felt like oh I'm actually running this this is excellent so yeah and I really 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 enjoy like technical descents especially when I feel good I feel like if I'm fatigued at all um like that's when my brain doesn't like react as quickly but I felt so like on that day and was just like thoroughly enjoying every single step except for that like steep climb at the end I feel like that was just rude and cruel but I loved <laughs> watching those videos of you guys it it was almost comical like I know you guys are working so hard but you're moving so slow you're just walking <laughs> yeah I'm like walking for my life all of a sudden <laughs> it's like so dumb yeah oh. and I enjoyed that most of the course was runnable like I just like to run so I'd rather run than hike <laughs> and yeah that last little pit I was not pitch I was not enjoying but like I loved the steep descent down and like even just above tree line like up the high point it was like so flowy and like engaging and fun and and that's like the type of trail running I like truly love when you have to be kind of like kind of hauling and not thinking I maybe have that like brain that doesn't think about consequences or something so not really like worried about eating it <laughs> even though I maybe should but yeah it's just like when I have the most fun you just like want to laugh the whole time yeah, yeah. it was just like an excellent day <laughs> which I will well, not take for granted because that does not happen <laughs> every time <laughs> no cherish those but I mean it sounds I mean you going on your second run and the sun coming out and everything being so perfect it just seems like one of those great experiences you'll you'll never forget and hopefully you do cherish of you know um being where you are probably meant to be in that moment that that sun coming out and everything um and it's really cool to hear you know that rolling into the next day of you're like I didn't care like I was just running I was having a good time I had energy and that's that's what makes those days so special. Like you'll remember <laughs> that for the rest of your career. Yeah. You'll be like, yeah, we did this trail that was like fast, but like not as hard as the East Coast. And I felt good. <laughs> yeah, it, it was really yeah. cool. I feel like you train every day in the hopes that one of those days happens. And it's like every year, you don't know if that's going to happen. And I feel like it's like once every few years you actually just get like something that comes together so definitely like don't expect that to be every time but like truly enjoyed that that was the case on that day yeah Danny and I were actually talking about this like an hour or two ago just there are some days when you ask your body for more and it actually gives you more it doesn't happen <laughs> often but it's really cool when it does but yeah. it's you had a great day I loved watching your somersault um down the final <laughs> downhill very Second very <laughs> uh quick on your feet man you were ready for it you just like popped right back up and, and threw it well, down the hill the pitch was so steep it like pretty much flings you back up you didn't have any of that time to be like I'm on the ground now time to lay here <laughs> for a second it was like nope you're just sliding back into it if I don't get up now I'm gonna keep rolling <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much and at least it like sends you in the right direction <laughs> oh, totally. yeah I mean it yeah. looked like Garrett had a good fall there Remy oh also God. was like so, so it, it, like it was like he had so much money to me just he kept sliding on his butt so that alone was like oh that's steep that's really steep. yeah it was kind of crazy and like so chunky um and it would make turns like I feel like if it would just shoot me down I'd be pr fine but you're like all of a sudden about to hit a bush and you're like oh god redirect I gotta get this way <laughs> like not into the bush but also I feel like I run so much worse when I know that they're filming because <laughs> I'm like no longer like a hundred percent focused yeah I don't know I didn't enjoy that part as much <laughs> I'm like don't look at me and I'll run better I swear <laughs> um well again second place both prologue and the final the prologue is interesting for those who haven't listened to our golden trail world series recap they were sent off one by one so the most information you're getting is if you pass people that went out ahead of you or you know someone's passing you you kind of get the idea that like you're running a certain place otherwise you're pretty much pushing yourself like from start to finish uh, which uh, Lauren ended up second. The final was interesting though, because it's back to race, normal, what you're used to and everything. And it seems that you passed Joyce maybe in like the last 10K or roughly. Um, 
no or, one, yes. 1k oh yeah, yeah. how yeah. did like, that feel did you realize you were moving into second like that adrenaline just must have been pumping like crazy I mean I think I was trying not to kind of think about what place I was in because for those long ones like if I get like a little too impatient or something like I'll just so easily put myself over so I'm like I just need to not care and just run and so I didn't really know I was in third for most of it and then I was kind of thinking like oh I don't really know who else could be in front of me like maybe I am in third and then coming up the like steep hill I could finally see her because I didn't see her like the whole race from the gun basically and then the steep hill and, and everyone kept telling me like oh she's coming back like she's you know she's popped a little bit like she rolled her ankle something happened but of course, like that steep pitch, I'm that's just not my favorite. So I'm like just trying to survive that. Like I don't can't tell if I'm closing or not. And then I knew the descent was gonna be fun, but she had had a faster descent than me on the prologue. So I was like, okay, well, might be like actually quite tight. Um, and I saw like Megan Lacey and her husband, um, Alex, and they were like so hype at the top and they were getting me so stoked. And like Andy Wacker was up there too. And I feel like I was just like oh my god I was very content with third like what a second happens and I felt like just things when like things you didn't even ask for are, like happening to you and that was like oh my god this is crazy and then I started descending and finally like caught up to her probably by the end of that like crazy descent um and then you have maybe like a k to go or something they kind of drop you down you turned around and and climbed back up to the finish and I really thought like oh my gosh after all that track, this comes down to a freaking sprint, like a kick. I'm going to die and also laugh later. But like the sprinter hands are going to have to come out. Like I'm really going to have to dig for that. Um, but it did. She just like didn't quite have like this response. And I was able to just kind of like pull away pretty slowly the last K. But for it to come down to the end like that and after two hours of racing is like so new to me. Kind of crazy. Yeah. That's what makes it so fun. We got a lot of that on the guys' side this year, but we didn't get a lot of it on the women's side. So it was cool to see you guys kind of like literally going back and forth until the end for a lot of the women in the top 10. Yeah, Definitely yeah. Everyone was like so packed up and it really wasn't like I was never just kind of solid. Like I could tell Sophia was behind me like pretty much a lot of the time. And then on the climb, like Judith was coming up and I'm like, oh my gosh. Like, you think you're alone and you're just not. Like, they're all yeah. still so close. Yeah, and which is awesome because everyone's so good. It's just, like, very dominant, like, top 10. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's really cool. And, like, at least for the overall rankings for people that were participating in all the series, there was a different winner nearly every single time. Like, it's the most diverse amount of winners we've had in the series ever, I think. Mm -hmm. um, and so that also is a trickle down slash, you know, rising tide raises all ship situation where that then trickles down through the entire top 10, top 15. And yeah, just all the clips were incredibly cool. Um, when all is said and done, you've had a little bit of distance from it, maybe not a ton of distance. Do you want to do Golden Trail World Series again? <laughs> uh, I still like the idea of being able to do other things. And I think, I mean, I think I had like the best weekend I could have possibly had. And I get that that kind of like raised my points or whatever. And I really didn't game it too well. Like I didn't know it was actually a triple pointer or whatever the heck. Like I didn't really know how the points worked. I was just kind of like leaving that up to chance. But um, maybe next year I'll like try to game it a little bit more. I definitely, I like the idea of just like being able to pick your own kind of season and not have to be on like the sort of like loop or circus and the series is pretty sweet. Like they do pick really cool races, but um, like with worlds happening this year and like that being important to me, um, I'll probably pick a few. I don't know if I'll do all of them, but yeah, I just the ones that are exciting to me and maybe I'll pick courses with like more technical running so I can maybe make up some ground there, or like practice that. So I'm not quite sure. Definitely want to do Sears and all next year, but other than that, I'm not quite sure on the series what I want to do. Oh, I'm stoked you want to do series and all. That's what we were talking about. We wanted to see you in off of the offline. We'll see. We'll see. Oh. I need to get a lot stronger, I think. Nah, you you'll you'll have plenty of time to work on that uh 
that base because you've got all the, the speed, you know, compared to a lot of people. But you ended up second, first American for the the um, the two days. But a lot of other American women were up there in the mix for the first time in a while. Was that the most we've ever had in a final top 10, Danny? I'm pretty sure because all the other year I could think of is Ali, Sophia. Um, that, yeah, I think that might be just Ali and Sophia. Yeah. In a final. Yeah. 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 And so I'm just curious, like, what are your thoughts on like American women in the sub ultra short trail scene right now? Um, yeah. I mean, it was awesome. Like the top 20, I think like most of us were all right there. And like, on any day, like Rachel and I were talking about this about the US team or making the US team for worlds. Like if everyone shows up, we're like having gonna have to really throw down for this, like throw Grayson back in and like yeah, it's gonna be like quite the battle for the classic and like uphill teams. Um and the marathon I mean, yeah, like the marathon distance team too, depending on what people want to do. But um it's it was really cool and I don't know, this is maybe like a generalization, but sometimes it feels like, you know, hate track, but track can feel like very competitive and like kind of like cutthroat in a way. And I just felt like everyone, we were all like at the same hotel and it's just like, everyone's rooting for each other. I don't know if it's because trails, like usually people a little more chill or I don't know if it's just like, you're kind of just on your own battle, you know, and you're, you place where you place, but everyone was just so happy for each other and like so supportive. And it doesn't feel like there's that same like head to head competitive mentality or like, oh, I have to beat you or else, you know, like identity's crushed or anything like that. Like everyone's just like so happy for each other and wants each other to succeed. Like even I feel like Rachel had a really, 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 really great race in the final. And I know like technical running is just not her jam a hundred percent, but she's worked on that for like years and years. And to see her like just freaking be so strong in that final. And I don't know, like in Mammoth, she was in tears after because she had gone the wrong way. Um, and she had never been in the top 10 before and she was in top 10 spot. Um, so just to like see that come together for her was like, I think maybe the, one of the coolest stories of the weekend. Um, yeah, I just think the American women are all like just such good people also. So it makes it easier to to want to root for them and like train together, race together and travel together. Yeah, it's hard to identify exactly where that like cheering for each other originates from. I think there's like a couple of answers. Like you said, it might be the type of personalities the sport attracts. Um, maybe it's the sport itself. It's like a different type of humbling uh, when you're going through yeah. these events. It's it's all pain, but it's like different variations of pain compared to the track mm -hmm. and road. Um, and yeah, maybe it's, you know, what, I don't know. I wasn't in track in the 80s or whatever, but maybe that's just how it starts naturally. And then these other external fact factors can shape like the direction a sport goes in. Um, but yeah, it's, it's really cool. And I hope that continues. And, um, like we said, like, it'd be cool to have some trail teams one day that, you know, are working at it together, similar to a college team trying to win a national championship together. It's like, can you like, um, strengthen that bond even more and be like, we want to win the next three world championships. How do we do that? Like, and mentor yeah. and like be there for each other on the highs and the lows. Um, so that's really cool. But yeah, we also are super stoked for Rachel because I saw some clips and I was like, Rachel looks good, like on that downhill, mm -hmm. like, and it is something that she, like you said, she's been working on. And so to like pull it together um, was really, really cool to see. And then top 10 at the final, I mean, the proof is in the pudding. I mean, that's super, super <laughs> freaking sick. Um, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I don't know. It, it is just like, it feels like a different culture or yeah, maybe trails just like another level of humbling because you're like, there's literally nothing I can do. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you're just beating me hiking right now. Like you go, <laughs> you freaking go. <laughs> like it's, yeah, it's more like you versus yourself and like the the course or the mountain itself, not as much you like head to head com competi 
competing competing <laughs> yeah. we're all struggling a little like, bit today <laughs> struggle I feel bus. like there's there's almost nothing more humbling than getting like past past on while you're being hike, hiking while oh, wow see wow <laughs> while you're hiking there's nothing worse than that when you're just like how are you moving so much faster we're yeah, walking like such a slow pass too and you can like just kind of pat them on the back and be like yeah. You freaking go. <laughs> I great, I've, great job. Yeah, I've spanked so many butts of like friends. I'm like, yeah, get up there. <laughs> I'll see you at the top. <laughs> oh, God. And then you can like watch it all play out. And you're like, let's go. Yeah. yeah. yeah no. <laughs> from behind. <laughs> I think that was funny. actually like the highlight reel from 2022 is I'm spanking Elise Ponset's butt. I'm like, yep, I'll see you. I'll, I'll see you in like a couple hours. It's a rough day. <laughs> I do. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I have an, an Elise Ponset patting me on the back as she passes me yeah. while we're walking and I'm like, later, dude. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's love it's all around. <laughs> it is. It's very humbling. <laughs> yeah. Well, oh. we should probably close this out. <laughs> oh, yeah. MK and Danny. But the future. We want to talk about yeah, the yeah, future. Yeah. yeah. Well, first question, I guess, is are you racing anything else this year? And then the next question would be like, I guess, what does the beginning of your year next year look like if you even have that planned? Um, yeah, we were kind of talking about this, but I'm taking like a couple weeks or a week of just like unstructured fun training. Like I've definitely been excited to get on the bike again and do some activities that I wasn't really doing in training before. Um, and then I'm racing the Benville Dirt Circus 10K in like three weeks or something like that. Um, mostly because it's in Arkansas. I'm like, I freaking love Arkansas. So <laughs> I wanted to go back and um, yeah. So hopefully I have like a workout or two between now and then that go. Okay. Cause yeah, I'm excited to race still, but um, more so just taking a little break. And then next year, kind of just gearing up for like the big goals for the summer. Um, I'm excited to maybe do more strength-based training, like long fart licks and tempos and, mod long runs like these things that I know I'm not so good at and so I've got to work on those things so kind of just like chipping away at my weaknesses to hopefully come back next year like stronger um yeah maybe like a road half at some point we'll see yeah so kind of just venturing into like longer (laughs) stuff for me which is gonna be really interesting because those were hard last year like definitely not my forte but hopefully after this past summer and fall maybe I've gotten a little stronger so I don't get so thrown by like a 16 mile hard long run or something <laughs> you definitely will I mean you just did a couple of two hour races I, right. I think it'll come a little bit easier than maybe you realize um yeah but yeah Bentonville super sick um really excited for you to go there and actually absolutely demolish my uh course record from the first year <laughs> pretty sure that's gonna be like 40 minutes to my 47 um but also that <laughs> is the usatf uh 10k trail championships which is really cool um so maybe lauren will be picking up another usa championship there um just a little shout out to them it is an incredible event and they are going to have a live stream too with mountain outpost but so we'll definitely be following oh. along um thank you and I know you said road half, but just, sorry, one last question. This is difficult, Danny MK. Golden Trail probably is going to start in April. Do you think you would start that early or kind of stick to the summer? Or I mean, any, or anything yeah. in the spring, I guess. Like, is anything tickling your fancy? Is that a weird thing to say on here? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Bringing up tickling is always an interesting one. <laughs> I did not say that. Uh, anything striking your, striking your interest in the spring? <laughs> I don't know if my tick my fancy has been tickled about anything yet, but um uh the spring is is like feels a little far away at the moment. Um I definitely want to have like a race between now and then. Um depends on kind of like how I feel in training. I feel like the winter is just gonna be more road stuff anyway. So um maybe a road half will just be fun to see like how I can do. And I think there's a few in like early March. I think uh the Japan trail race looks really fun because it looks really technical. Um, so maybe I can get my like logistics together to get my butt over there. But um, I, yeah, I'll have to see if like how to gamify the the season if I want to try to do 
X number of golden trail to get my points and then rank a little higher and make some money. Cause that makes some sense, especially. Yeah. With just like feeling like I could have placed a little higher if I had just done like decent at one other race, but I'm not sure about those early ones, but kind of just looking forward to training right now. Like I freaking love training. So I'm excited to do that for a little while. Well, we're excited to see where you end up next year. No matter what you do, we'll be cheering for you. you. Thanks guys. (laughs) And uh, thanks for joining us again. And we'll probably chat to you. Hopefully not next year. Like, I don't know. feels like it's been too, too far between episodes, you know? Or hopefully. Yeah. At least I see you guys in person. (laughs) Yes. Now, Now we get to run into each other. Yeah. Yeah, thank God. That's super fun. So yeah, <laughs> hopefully another another podcast chat here soon. Awesome. Well thanks again, Lauren. This has been the Sub Pub Podcast brought to you by Free Trail.